that folks hey unless I sign off and I say uh, that I'm ending the live stream uh, stick around because uh, a lot of times we have hardware or software difficulties we also have bandwidth difficulties so until I sign off uh, stick with the broadcast sorry about that folks I'm not always in control of the bandwidth that I'm getting supporter of the movement. I'm just getting my camera out here so I can take a couple of pictures. And again, just to remind you, if the broadcast just happens to go down for one reason or another, unless I sign off, uh, that means that I'm going to try and get back on as quickly as possible. So stick around. I'm not always, uh, I'm at the mercy of bandwidth. Yeah, lately I've been having a problem with the Ustream software, and uh, now that I'm situated and stable enough, I can finish coding my app, which I'm sure will be a lot more stable than this one. Anyway, for those of you just joining us, we're down here at West Oakland Bar, on, uh, here for Block the Boat. I guess we're going to have speakers here in a minute. We understand Block the Boat is uh, this particular boat, Zim Shanghai, is on its way to Los Angeles where there will be another Block the Boat demonstration to keep them from unloading cargo down there. So yes, uh, Block the Boat started here in Oakland and it's spread nationally uh, to Seattle, uh, Bellevue, uh, down to San Diego, Los Angeles, Tampa, Houston, and I think it's only a matter of time before more ports are going to join in to protest New York, probably. Um, I think this has more to do with the union than anybody else. Again, for those of you just joining us, we're here at West Oakland Bar. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Happy that you could join us. And we're here to block the boat. The boat being the Zim Shanghai. Zim 
Uh, you can look them up on the web. They're uh, Israeli. They're uh, owned. Uh, I believe the government owns about half of the shares of stock in Zim, Israeli government. And so by keeping the Zim ships from unloading, what what happens is, is it uh, it's depriving them of a way to get their products to market. And we believe uh, the uh, block the boat people, uh, myself included, I believe Israel is an apartheid state. And that uh, one of the most effective ways we could deal with them is by boycotting their products and by not letting them sell their products here in the United States or anywhere else for that matter. Um, and a lot of great deal of these products are made through the exploitation of people in the West Bank uh, because times are tough for Palestinians because of the apartheid that they have to live on. So, and it's not right. Uh, this started as a response to what was happening in Gaza. Uh, a few months ago. Uh, it's not an entirely new tactic. We've used it before uh, back in the 80s against uh, South Africa to uh, great success and uh, and now we're finding that uh, the same tactic applied today also is very successful. We should be on the march pretty soon, you know me, I have a short attention span. <laughs> I'm not going to stick around when things are kind of boring. Hey, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm not sure when it's going to arrive in Los Angeles. Um, you can go to Block the Boat on Facebook, Block the Boat for Palestine, and I'll give you more information. Uh, there's a text number that you can text, and I'll uh, try and get that for you here in a second. I mean, matter of fact, I think I'll walk up to the table and ask. <laughs> you know, I thought that somebody would be here at some food table. It's Hey, you wouldn't happen to know the text number if people were uh, wanted to find out updates about the block the boat? Yeah, ask the guy. I don't have it somewhere in the back. Okay. Um, ask the guy in the brown pants. Okay, thanks. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Now let's give him a second here. Hi. I have a question for you. Okay. What's the number, uh, the text number, if people want to find out about the latest updates about Block the Boat? Okay, uh, it's... Okay, 3465951. Three four six five nine five one. Yep, five one zero. Okay, five one zero three four six five nine five one. If somebody wants to put that up on chat, five one zero three four six five nine five one, and you text join, and then you will receive the latest updates on what's going on here with Block the Boat. Yep, and we're just milling about, awaiting the start of the demonstration. Food provided by Food Not Bombs, which they're constantly under attack by the authorities because they don't want people feeding the homeless.
I have. We have a pretty good sized crowd here. I'd say about almost 200 people at West Oakland Bar. If you're in the area, you can come down. It's very easy to get to. We're right outside Bar at West Oakland stop. How you doing? I heard I couldn't make the meeting yesterday morning. Does anybody know who the buyer is? Nobody knows. So whoever knows ain't saying. So there's going to be a protest at the Berkeley Post Office on November 1st? Yeah, Saturday. Saturday? 11 o'clock. There you go. The first thing that happens is uh, at 11 o'clock, and then the afternoon is going to be, mid afternoon is going to be a chance to say. Yeah. All right. No, two blocks, two blocks east of Berkeley Bar. For those of you watching, every night I'll be live streaming there. That'll be on Saturday at 11 a.m. Oh, yeah? Because they're not San Francisco anymore. Yeah, I agree. Santa Clara. No, I, I think they should be allowed to call themselves San Jose. They're in the San Jose metropolitan area. That's true. I've always so been against what... San Jose, but... I've always had a problem with the Washington Redskins. What should, be, what, what, what should the 49ers' new last name be? Because the 49ers are more racist than the Redskins, because the 49ers slaughtered Redskins. Right. So we got to change the name of the 49ers, because that's also racist. Yeah, they used to have a bounty out. That's and right. And if you were a Native American... They paid, uh, this was here in California, not too long ago either. More 49ers made right. money killing Redskins. Yeah, they actually made more money. Bulls. Yeah. Killed something like three quarters of a million Indians died in like five years. Okay, so we all agree, change the name of San Francisco 49ers. But I say my name is the San Jose Academics, the A's. <laughs> I mean, it sounds good, right? San Jose A's. Academics also sounds good. Originally, it was going to be the nerds, but no one likes that. The San Jose nerds. Oh, yeah. All right. Some spirit going here.
God. So, I'm going to start us off by um, introducing Lala Kaswani, the Arab Resource Organizing Center. How are you all feeling today? Let me hear you. Let my Palestine hear you. We are here to make sure our voices are heard, that the city of Oakland hears us, that the port hears us, that Palestine hears us, that the racist, exclusionary, Zionist state of Israel hears us, that we are not going to stop until we end apartheid here and everywhere. Let me hear you. It's really great to be out here again today. We were out in August. We came out in our numbers. We responded to the resistance on the ground in Palestine. They called us to action. They called people all over the world to action to support their ongoing struggle for liberation. We are out here, and we were out here in August to respond to the Palestinian trade union that called workers to action, called workers all over the world to action, to stand in solidarity with them in their struggle for liberation. And we did that in August, and we did that, we're doing that today, because it's not about the bombardment of Gaza. We know the bombardment of Gaza is only a symptom of the racist, exclusionary, Zionist state of Israel that can only sustain itself with extreme force and violence. And what we saw in Gaza this past summer was only one example of that. We saw it in 2008. We saw it in 2012. We've seen it since 1948. And until Zionist state of Israel ends, we will continue to struggle against apartheid. The Block the Vote Coalition came together to take the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, to take our convictions for liberation to the streets, to the port of Oakland, to disrupt international commerce, to make a political and economic impact on the racist, exclusionary state of Israel. And we did that, but we also exposed the relationship between the United States government and the state of Israel. Because the relationship between the United States government and the state of Israel is instrumental to U.S. imperialism. And we did that again one month later with the Urban Shield action. Together, impacted communities organized against a, an expo, a surveillance expo, an expo where law enforcement, both local and federal, come together with international security forces, including the racist state of Israel, to learn how to better repress and police our communities. And what did we do in Oakland? We kicked out Urban Shield from Woo! Oakland. Yeah. yeah. And what we're doing now is we're showing that the BDS movement is exactly that. It's a cross movement. It's a movement that builds across all races. It's a movement that builds across all sectors and brings together the most impacted communities to reclaim our struggles, to really bring BDS and bring the struggle for liberation into our communities and into the streets. And we did that. The Bay Area, as Reem mentioned, is reviving BDS. We are putting BDS to action. You're not only not buying the product, we're actually telling you what you can or cannot do in our city. And we're doing that because we're invested in our communities. We know Israel plays a role in weakening and repressing our communities. And we know that by weakening the state of Israel, we are weakening U.S. imperialism. And when we bring down U.S. imperialism, we're fighting for our self-determination. So today, let's make sure we let Jim know. Let's make sure we let the Port of Oakland know. Let's make sure we let the city know. Let's let make sure we know Oakland Police Department know that we are not going to stop. BDS is about denormalizing Zionism in every way, shape, and form. We will weaken Israel. We will weaken Zionism. We will up amplify the voices of those impacted by it. We will expose the relationship with the United States and, and Israel. And we will show our power. Today, as you all have heard, Zim is not coming. Zim knows we're organizing ourselves. In August, for four consecutive days, we made history, as we did in 2010 when we blocked the boat, when we blocked Zionism at the Port of Oakland. And we did that in August for four consecutive days, which also rolled over to actions all over North America. We have people organizing block the boat actions from Vancouver to New York to Tampa to New Orleans to Long Beach. This is an international movement with support from South Africa and the people on the ground in Palestine. And we're going to continue to do so because we know Zim is on the run. Currently, the Zim ship 
is still headed to Oakland, technically, because it's arrival, and it's, it's a place where arrival is scheduled as Oakland. However, we know it's veering off course. It's veering west, and we want it to continue to veer west. We want to make sure it knows what to expect if it chooses to dare to come to our town, because we are going to stop it, whether it comes tomorrow, Tuesday, or Wednesday, whether it comes to Vancouver, New York, or Long Beach. We're going to stop Israeli apartheid and international commerce with the state of Israel to make a real impact, and that's why we are here today. Let me inform you that we even heard today from the Oakland Police Department, who so friendly wanted us to know that, did you hear Zim isn't coming to Oakland anymore? Well, we appreciate the Oakland Police Department sharing this piece of information with us, <laughs> but we also don't take our cues from Oakland Police Department. We don't take our cues from the state. We are going to be here marching and protesting to make sure that the whole world knows that Zim has no place here, that Israeli apartheid has no place here, that Zionism has no place here. We are building an international movement of solidarity for justice for everybody. Free, free Palestine! Free, 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 free. And this is an international solidarity movement, and we are very proud to be hand in hand with communities in struggle all across the U.S., but in, in movements struggling for self-determination all around the world. Uh, the following is a statement put out by the uh, BDS National Committee from Occupy Palestine in 20, uh, September 23rd, 20, 2014. The Palestinian Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions National Committee, the largest coalition in Palestinian society, and the reference for the global BDS movement for the Palestinian right, warmly salutes Oakland, California. <laughs> Dock workers and community activists for their principles, ongoing and effective solidarity with the Palestinian struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. We wholeheartedly endorse the plan for action to take place later this month by blocking an Israeli ship for four consecutive days in August at the height of the Israeli massacre in Gaza. Oakland workers and activists succeeded in standing, indeed, and in the word, with 1.8 million Palestinians in the besieged and occupied strip. The call from Gaza that was issued on September 5th, the BNC and the main trade and professional unions, women's association, and mass movements in Gaza called for, quote, building effective direct action against Israel and Israeli's companies, such as inspiring block the boat actions that prevented Israeli ships from unloading all the way from California to Seattle. So now I'm going to introduce Mohammed Sheikh from Critical Resistance. Great to see everybody out here on this brisk Sunday afternoon. So my name is Muhammad Sheikh. I'm with Critical Resistance. And CR is an organization that's dedicated to the abolition of the prison industrial complex. So our work is part of global struggles against inequality and oppression. So we must stand in solidarity with Palestine against Israel's continued colonization, occupation, and use of imprisonment and administrative detention against the Palestinian people. The prison has long functioned as a cog in the Israeli settler colonial regime. Since its creation in 1948, the Israeli state has imprisoned over 800,000 Palestinians, which constitutes around 20% of the Palestinian population in historic Palestine. The large majority of these have been under military orders and administrative detention. That's a procedure that allows the military to hold prisoners indefinitely on the basis of secret evidence without charging them or allowing them to stand trial. According to the Palestinian Ministry of Detainees, there isn't a single family that has not experienced arrest some numerous times. Israel has turned every corner in occupied Palestine into a prison, detention camp, and interrogation facility. However, the Palestinian prisoner situation 
only reflects a larger, more systemic issue, the politics of colonization. As a prison abolition organization, not only do we call for the dismantling of Israel's prison system, but also the corresponding economic, social, and political conditions that have created the mechanisms by which the indigenous po Palestinian population has been and continues to be ethnically cleansed from its native land for over six decades. We also understand that organizing and fighting against policing is central to the abolition of the PIC. These past couple months, we saw the police do exactly what they are meant to do. To murder, imprison, and repress our communities. The long time violence and occupation against black and brown people here is being bolstered by a rapid trend of militarization, which the state of Israel plays an essential role in. As the U.S. provides Israel over $3 billion a year to help it maintain its occupation, Israeli forces take their lessons, their surveillance technologies, and racist counter-terrorism counter tactics from their military projects and pass them on to, to U.S. law enforcement to be used against our communities here. So as Lada had mentioned, Urban Shield in Oakland is just one concrete example of this. Oakland stood up against Urban Shield and kicked it the hell out of our town. Yeah, it's a big, big. And just as, we, just as we did with Urban Shield, we'll kick Zim out of Oakland as well. But as the U.S. and Israel together continue to play a crucial role in exporting weapons, intelligence, and surveillance technologies to maintain the system of global repression, the people fighting against this repression all over the world are finding common cause and expressing deep solidarity with one another. This is what it means for Khad Adnan, a Palestinian prisoner who was on hunger strike for 66 days, to write a letter last year supporting the hunger strikes in Pelican Bay and in prisons all over California, saying that the prison systems all over in the U.S. and Israel expose the ugly face of these false democracies that are guilty of occupation, tyranny, and social repression. This is what it means for Palestinians in Gaza who are still being savagely bombarded by Israeli missiles to tweet to Ferguson protesters facing a military style crackdown on how to deal with tear gas. This is what it means for those in Ferguson and everywhere that protested Michael Brown's murder and policing to go out into the streets and wave Palestinian flags. This is what solidarity means, this is what it has meant, and this is what solidarity will continue to mean until we achieve our collective self-determination and liberation. Thank you. All right, let's hear your voices. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Next, I'm going to introduce Omar from Answer. amount of numbers that came out last time, but I know we can be a lot louder than that. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! It's always good to come to a rally to support the liberation of Palestine, whether it be in Oakland or in San Francisco, and it's good to see another amount of people that have come out to support, to block the boat, the Zim ship liners. My name is Omar Ali and I'm with the Answer Coalition and since the bombardment of Gaza there's been so-called pledges by so-called countries from Saudi Arabia to the United States to the European Union to say that we're going to reconstruct Gaza. They pledge billions of dollars to do so. But in reality it's just another new liberal policy to, call, to colonize Palestine. They're doing it through sweatshops, to open sweatshops in Gaza. They're doing it once again by blocking the Rafah border, 
in Egypt. And once again, the Egyptian regime, after a, an attack of the Egyptian military, they shut down the, uh, the Gaza border, once again. And that's the shame of the U.S. imperialism in Egypt that's going on for the past 30 years. It's great to see so many people out here. And you know, it's great that we have to bring in the connections between the different struggles, whether it be the ones in Ferguson or the ones here in Oakland and to the ones in Palestine. Not to mention that the United States has opened another war in the Middle East, in Iraq and Syria. Bombing Syria and bombing Iraq once again. Even though it didn't go through Congress, it's another illegitimate and illegal war by the United States government. And I can say that once again, that the Obama administration, even though it's a Democratic administration, has done far more intervention and intervention in the, in the world than the Bush regime. And that's what we're facing here today. And like other speakers have said, that we shut down the Urban Shield, we've kicked out Urban Shield, and we will continue to come here and kick out the Zim ship if it ever comes back to Oakland once again. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Thank you. Alright, so we're, we're, we're nearing, we're going to get ready to march, but in order to really march with our voices loud, we need to start practicing our vocal cords, right? So, you know, part of being, part of these movements is actually having fun doing them, right? So, we need to up our ante on our chants. So, who's familiar with Turn the Beat Around by Gloria Estefan? Yeah? So we're going to turn this ship around, okay? So when I, when I sing the first verse, turn the ship around, I want you guys to say, let me educate you, alright? Turn the ship around, let me educate you. Here today. 
Uh, ours is even more deeply connected than uh, I think a lot of people will know. You know, actually the Israeli Defense Forces uh, go to my country too and train there. We even have something called IDF also. It's called the Investment Defense Forces. Uh, it's not by coincidence, I have to say. Uh, they're actually defense forces of the government, trained by Israeli uh, military, trained also by the U.S. military to defend capitalist investment in the Philippines. Uh, and so there's a direct connection between the oppression of our people, the suppression of our movements for self-determination, and the, the movement for self-determination in Palestine. And so we say, by strengthening and standing in solidarity with the people of Palestine, we're also standing up for our own liberation. We'd like to see the Israeli military out of our country. We'd like to see the U.S. military out of our country. We'd like to see the uh, corporations that are there reaping profits off of our bodies and taking them to, you know, the back pockets of the uh, half percent CEOs out there. Um, to stop doing that so that we can keep our country for ourselves. Uh, so people can actually make a, a living, be able to not be in poverty all the time, be able to just live with dignity, just like everybody here is also fighting for. So if you agree with me and you're standing for the same thing, are you going to march with me down to that court? Are you going to march with me and with everybody here the next time that this trip, trip tries to dock in Oakland? All right, let's do that. Thank you. When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. When our communities are under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. When Oakland is under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. When Palestine is under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. All right, guys, we are going to get ready to be loud, to be proud, to be unified, and to make our voices heard on the streets of Oakland and at the port of Oakland. Are you all ready? Yes. So we're going to line up right here. So the front of the march, folks can kind of make their way to the beginning. And we're going to get ready to march. Can you make the national Oh, and for folks who can't, can't actually uh, march with us, we have transportation all lined up here, so if you're interested in getting a ride to the port, um, please line up over there. We have line of cars. Thank you. Thank you. Where are we going in? I'm going to go on the march. Oh, and there's also a wheelchair accessible van for folks with disabilities. So uh, getting ready to go on the march. I'm gonna go in a car. I am an old man getting there. But I will be down at the port. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Freeman Sullivan. And for those of you who may have just joined us, we're here at West Oakland BART in Oakland, California. It's a wonderful day. And we're down here to protest Block the Boat uh, to, to stop the shipping of cargo from Israel. Uh, Zim is, uh, if you heard the speakers, is uh, an Israeli. They own a, at least 50% share in the Zim, the international shipping company. And I guess Zim has about, uh, they operate uh, several hundred, a fleet of ships all around the world. Uh, and one of their biggest uh, things that they ship are armament, guns, bombs, and whatnot uh, around the world. So uh, chances are. Another thing, too, is um, to consider is that Israel does train American police in crowd control tactics because they have the most experience in suppressing a population. So that's another thing to consider about Israel. They're actually exporting their style of policing here in the United States. And we all see that what the results of the Israeli style policing tactics 
what happens here in the U.S. They also export U.S. stuff that we give or loan to them. They supply to other countries, usually really fascist, right-wing, counter-revolutionary countries or governments that are using U.S.-made weapons that that are funneled through Israel. Right, right. So it's like a third-party uh, distributor. So that's why we're out here, and we don't want Zoom. You're not welcome here in Oakland. And we'll make sure that you won't come back again. So uh, the Zionists were pretty pissed off about this whole thing. Uh, they actually asked the uh, police of Oakland to enforce, to to harass us. And, uh, you know, Oakland pretty much, the poor, you know, what are the, what are the police going to be able to do? Um, basically make the situation more violent, more dangerous. Um, and this is how we were able to stop the boat in the first place was by creating a hazardous condition yes. in which the workers yeah. could not work. Three of us. Great. Perfect. <laughs> and that's my little white car with the roof rack. Okay. Yeah. So we'll go anytime. Jim. Jim, want to ride? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay, it's the four of us. Okay. okay. And it's the little white car with the roof rack. I'll just Wonderful. Wonderful. I get too old to walk that far. I've done it many I times. Do. I, yeah, I have too. But, you know, That's a pretty, pretty, pretty good walk for those of you watching. It's about a mile and a half. But I can definitely walk back. Yeah, the other day for the uh, October 22nd police brutality, I almost died out there, boy. I was, I had worked my butt off. Let me check the chat while we're sitting here. Hey, Robert Fenwick. Hey, uh, the next uh, port of call, I believe, is in Seattle. Uh, that's what people online are saying, that uh, Seattle's gearing up and that they're going to be out there protesting and uh, block the boat as well, Seattle, Bellevue. And did you see online how many block the boat things there are? I mean, right. there's Miami. There's it, literally all the ports are coming online. And uh, yeah, the first it's going to win. Exactly I mean, it really right. is going to win. And we're going to see it win, and we're going to be a part of it. That's right. Yeah, this um, is very similar to what we did back in the 80s uh, with the anti-apartheid movement where we'd stop the flow of goods and services out of South Africa. And we called for divestment um, at the University of California. Um, and yours truly was arrested at one of the ports at Pier 80 in San Francisco for inciting to riot, resisting arrest, assault on a police officer, and lynching. Well, I'm quite proud of those charges. Lynching? Uh, yeah, lynching is trying to free somebody who's in custody because they were beating up my friend. And I wasn't going to let him beat up my friend. Oh, and, uh, yeah, well, needless to say, they dropped all the charges immediately because uh, the city of San Francisco was not supposed to be doing business with South Africa because the people had voted for that. Oh, interesting. And so they threw it all out of court immediately. And uh, I got to see myself on the news when I was in jail, and then they released me after after that. So What I like most uh, about BDS is most people say, what is BDS? So then you go in explain it. And then you go, well, why? So you get to explain. People go, yes, I love it. And it works. It really does. It really works. So it looks like the march is getting ready to leave here. That's We're going to go in an automobile. Here. Not that I'm lazy, but. Long time. You know, we could go be right behind them. Yeah, why don't we? Let's go. We're going to hop in the car here for people that are watching. And we're going to trailer march. Not quite as interesting as having me walk, but you really don't want to torture me, folks. Cool, I'm going to call shotgun here since I have the camera. There we go. This is unusual for people that are watching. Normally I march with the marchers. Uh, no, there isn't going to be a boat, Michelle, today. Uh, basically, we've heard that they were going out west. And uh, for those of you in the car, I'm talking to people online. Indeed. So, in case you want, in case you think I'm crazy or something. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> We're going to follow the march up here. Where do you get my 
seatbelt. If anybody's hungry, there's a cereal bar right up here. Very well, so folks. I'm trying to find my seatbelt here. You like ticketing people here in California for not having your seatbelts on? Oh yeah, most other states too. Down the window a little bit here. Free, free Palestine. Thank you, Buzz. It's I always appreciate people talking on the chat because when you chat, it actually tweets out that I'm live streaming on Twitter and uh, also Facebook. So do join in in the chat, and I do check on it quite frequently when there's usually nobody speaking or nothing's going on. So we're here in West Oakland. We're getting ready to leave Bart Station, and we got a march. Here we go. We're out here in the middle of the the street. All right. So a lot of the marchers are still here, a few people. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Yeah, there we go. This march is about a mile and a half. We got about 200 people. If the Google thing is Just pass him on the left. Yeah, if you want. No, you get a ticket. <laughs> a right job for sure. Oh boy, are they like that? Crossing the double line, ramming a march. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And chewing up at the same time. So we're headed for uh, Middle Harbor Road, which is about a. It's about. 12 blocks from here, I would guess, maybe less. And for those of you watching, I know it's not as interesting as me being on the march, but I've got to watch my uh, health. Especially after earlier this week when we were out for the October 22nd police brutality uh, demonstration, uh, where we actually faced off with the police department. Oh, really? I was there, but I wasn't able to continue on the march. Yeah, they stopped us. They, they stopped us from marching uh, when we got in front of the police station. And they had about 100 cops there, maybe 150 police. And, and barricades. Right. And, well, no, they didn't put any barricades up. They just went out in the street. And, um, and I really don't know why they did it, because they could have just let the march continue, and that would have been the end of the march. Um, but I guess it was just, you know... Well, we got the power. We can stop you from marching anytime we want. So people stood out in the middle of the street for about, I guess, a half an hour before we just decided to turn around and go another way. And the police didn't bother to follow us. And that was, the, you know, that's what they should have done in the first place. But I guess they had to have a reason. Basically, I think it was a reason to justify all the police that they had out there so they could all say, you know, they could all... When they working went, hard, working right? hard. Yeah, right when... Take that uh, overtime. Getting that overtime, right? As if the police, Oakland Police Department isn't already draining the Oakland city coppers dry through all the uh, all the settlements that they have to do to uh, for police brutality. So we're following the march here. I don't know if you can see it up there, up there in the slightly ahead. We're trailing it in an automobile. Oh yeah, they had mills. You see, um, uh, Merritt College was there. Um, then there was all the high schools. There was quite a few high schools. If I had one thing that I could say that detracted from the demonstration, it was the 
well, they were kind of restrained until the very end, and that was the RCP. And for those of you who are not in the know politically of uh, the radical uh, groups here in this Bay Area and around the country, uh, RCP is the Revolutionary Communist Party. And, uh, but they promoted, they really helped promote yeah. it. I worked with Stop Mass Incarceration Network. We had really good long meetings. We good. planned really well. Yeah, it was and very it, well planned. And it was not focused on Baba Bakian, although he got mentioned. He's always mentioned by the RCP. But it was not basically pushing him. It was really addressing yeah. the facts of mass incarceration. So and I'm agenda. not a big defender of the RCP at all, but I want to give him credit for World Can't Wait and stop mass incarceration and a lot of other things that they do really well. Yeah. They are motivated. Yeah, they are motivated. Now, one thing I can give you for that. I've been working with the RCP on an offer since like 83. But yeah, they were, you know, they were good. They were, they were actually really good. That was a great demonstration. Um, you can go back. Um, for those of you watching, you know I do archive all these live streams unedited, unexpurgated. unexpurgated on uh, YouTube, uh, just go to look, do a search for Freeman Sullivan, F-R-E-E-M-A-N-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, and uh, that's my channel. And you'll find all of these live streams archived there, usually within a few hours. Oh, that's nice. So picking They're up another following rider. and giving her a ride as she makes the march. That's good. Right. This is support. Support. They could still be physically uh, having some problems and still participate. You don't have to be young. And I might as well pass this stuff up. Yeah, if you're headed, if you're in a hurry, you're not. Drivers are. I always like it when people are in their cars and they get angry when they pull up on a demonstration, right? <laughs> I remember during the golf, the, the second Gulf War, we uh, organized to shut down the downtown San Francisco, and I was on a bicycle then, and um, part of what I did that day was defending people that were sitting out in the street blocking traffic from irate motorists. I had one guy that almost hit me because of it and uh, quite violent because he had to get to work that day and we were trying to tell him why doesn't he take the day off and uh, because he wasn't going to be able to get to his job anyway. So, but you know, some people are very single-minded. But there's other factors also. They're angry at a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Or they hadn't had their cup, cup of coffee. Or it's something with at home or something. There's always other factors. Um, actually, there's no, for people who are, are watching, uh, there is no problem with the police today. Uh, they've actually backed off quite a bit. Um, they're not taking orders from the Zionists, uh, it would appear, uh, because there was uh, quite a few Zionist groups that were trying to push the Oakland Police Department into uh, perhaps a more violent response against protesters, uh, trying to use the same tactics that they use against Palestinians. Well, it doesn't wash. This is the United States. And... Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, our police force is trained in Israel. Well, they don't really train them in Israel, but they bring uh, consultants, right? Which is like what I do with live stream. I'll consult people about how to live stream and whatnot, and that's basically what Israel does too. I wish this car would like turn around so we could get a better shot. We know that Idle No More has, as, as a part of all of their mass actions, a, por a portion that's dedicated to winning the police, and it's oh. not phony. Yeah, it's not phony. It's really sincere. They say, you know, whenever the police start to doubt their role, that that goes all the way through the society, and that in the in the end, that's actually what we're looking for. We're looking for people to refuse the law and order, especially the order that we're living under. And when these guys start to say, well, yeah, you know, I know some of these people. Number one, they're much less likely to be to use violence or incarceration against us as our side grows. But also, it's just 
I really like it. it it's not phony, and of course, Native Americans know what it's no, know what it means to be literally massacred. Um, and so they say, at, especially at the end, we're going to go out into the police and uh, just talk with them. And it's not naive kind of flower in the rifle like the, the hippie girl did, but it's... That worked too, it's, though. Yeah, it, well, that it's an image. Too. It's an image that worked. The image worked. Matter of fact, when you say the 60s anti-war, you can almost see that daisy going in the end of the rifle. That was at the Pentagon. Yeah, I remember when that happened. That was a few well, that's far. Be lying my age, huh? The National Guard put up the fence around our park. Yeah. Well, there's a kind of naive... It was on Bastille Day when we marched through the streets. In D.C.? Thousands and thousands of people surrounded the park. Kids, National Guard, looked a little uh, uneasy, put it that way. <laughs> they were totally... Totally, totally well, it is a good image. I mean, it, it speaks to a lot of people who don't have political sense that what is this person doing with a rifle facing a little girl with a flower? Right. Flower power. In people's what park? I remember most is marching that. along is that people in the houses along put their speakers outside and just blasting music all along the yard. Favorite that day was street fighting. That, day. So that was people's park, or that was uh... that was the march on on um, on the people's park when it was occupied yeah. by the National Guard, and this was on Bastille Day. Ah. So the demonstration is making a right up the street here. Headed towards the Port of Oakland. And the young man was killed, James Rector, was that his That's name? right, yeah. James Rector. James shot. Rector was shot off the In top, Berkeley, off the, off the rooftop. Off the rooftop. I'm going to talk a little bit about our upcoming live streams. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up tomorrow, but I'm going to try and make it. Uh, there's going to be a demonstration in front at 400 McAllister. Uh, right across the street from City Hall in San Francisco, uh, the uh, AJJHC accreditation trial for City College of San Francisco, City Attorney suing um, AJJ, AJJHC, I believe. ACCJC. ACC. ACCJC, there we go. Right. Um, so that's happening tomorrow at 7.30 in the morning uh, before the court case, and that'll be going on for the next three days, or as long as the trial. And on Tuesday, we'll be at the downtown Berkeley BART for a solidarity demonstration with the people of Kobani. Uh, as you know, they're fighting fierce battles. Uh, there today, I've, ISIS launched a major counterattack yesterday, but they were driven back. And uh, much, much love out to those fighters. Uh, there we go. We're getting ready to head well, over. You know, on the 8th is the big Berkeley post office thing. Uh, yeah, November 8th. No, that's November 1st. Over. Crazy. Yeah, maybe, maybe it'll be more than just one day. But that's ongoing. Berkeley is going to be yep. ongoing. Got lost. Right. Yeah. City College was the large. City College of San Francisco was the largest uh, college in the United States for a while in enrollment. At one time, they had over 110,000 students that were enrolled there, and now their uh, enrollment has dwindled down to about 80,000, which is very sad because uh, City College of San Francisco is one of the few colleges here in California that your average person could actually afford to pay for. And, uh, right, you can get an education, at least an associate's degree, at a relatively low cost. And, uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh, a big shout out to all the people at Occupy London, Occupy Democracy, uh, that have got the Tarpaulin Revolution going out in London. Big shout out to them. Uh, you can follow them. They're on Bambuser, uh, which I don't use Bambuser because the social networking part of it, uh, the chat is not as uh, it's not as robust as the chat on UStream. But anyway, I, the hashtag for that is OLSX or Occupy Democracy, and they're currently occupying a spot of land right across from the Parliament Building. So they're out there every night in the cold and rain of London. 
and also another big shout out to Occupy Hong Kong. You know, and for all these idiots and critics who said that Occupy was dead, right? <laughs> hey, we're here to tell you that it's not. Just go online yeah. and Occupy anything and it comes up. Millions of people. That's right. So Occupy will never die. We just grow out and multiply. We multiply. <laughs> Smashes and we multiply. So. Is Diwali over now, or still? Uh, I don't know. There's the freight here. This is what's left of what's left of industrial America. As you can see, there's no factories down here. There used to be factories down here, but they're all gone. The, the Port of Oakland, I believe, is the fourth largest port in the United States. It is one of the larger ports in the world. It used to be factories from Cerrito all the way to San Jose. It was a ball. Went to China. They ship all their goods. There were tax credits for moving your company's labor force. Just totally back. So we're following the police escort of the march here. We're in West Oakland, headed down for the port. And this is your live steamer, Freeman Sullivan. And you can follow me on Twitter. Hey, Priscilla Girl, how you doing? Uh, so a lot of these folks that are in our chat I interact with all day because I do monitor live streams and retweet out and try to build audiences for other live streamers uh, we have a nice little community um, so we're uh, hoping that if you got a you're watching and you're not live streaming already uh, basically what it takes is a smartphone with a camera uh, at least five megapixel and a, I would recommend an unlimited data plan which is offered by Metro PCS uh, they're the cheapest uh, for $60 uh, you can get one from T-Mobile for $99 but why pay the extra $39 when they're all in the same network oh yeah thanks for reposting that uh, for people that are following on the chat uh, that is a number you can text join and you will receive text updates of what's happening with Block the Boat. And just in case the, the ship does happen to decide to pull in. Uh, because one time they had this demonstration, I recall, and it looked like the uh, the boat was headed out of the harbor. They even went out of the harbor. They went out the right? and came back. Right, and then they went out to the Pacific and then they turned around um, and crept back in the middle of the night. I guess it's about a half a block of worth of people. About 200 folks. And we are going to yes, D, which is ILWU Hall. Right. Okay. And ILWU has a long history of uh, social justice and uh, supporting social justice movements. Uh, they were very integral in their anti apartheid efforts, uh, just as they are today. And while they can't officially support what we're doing here with Block the Boat. Um, they have, uh, they're very sympathetic to what we're doing here today. Let's just put it that way.
Yes, Cindy, I moved into uh, moved to Oakland. Uh, I was, uh, for those of you that follow me, I was living in D.C. And uh, I enjoyed my time in D.C., but uh, well, I didn't like the weather. And, and I wanted to be, this is the Bay Area pretty much is the, in my, uh, as my opinion, is the sort of like a, the, the starting point for a lot of radical movements and a lot of what happens in American politics. Um, very progressive uh, place. And I came back here because as a live streamer, there's more to cover here. I could actually be out almost every day covering a demonstration very similar uh, to like the one we're having here. And it's for those of you that watch my live streams, I'm out uh, sometimes as many as three to four days a week. And while DC did provide a lot of the, a lot uh, of, you know, there's a lot of demonstrations in DC too. Uh, it still wasn't like, it's still not like the Bay Area. But we have a long history of public public demonstrations and popular struggles. So we're getting close to the port. We'll be there in another 10 minutes if this march proceeds at the pace that it's proceeding on. Follow uh, Steve Rhodes. He's at Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat. You can follow him on Twitter. I don't Twitter. What I really like to do is see see albums where you can just go through at your own speed. Oh yeah, he's got um he uh, posts on Demotics too, which is a journalist. Demotics. Photo, yeah, Demotics. Yeah, the photojournalist website where they basically you upload and then they. Uh, and then it goes into a pool, and if it gets picked up, uh, you get money for it. There's one of the trucks pulling into the port. Of course, he's empty. Somewhat we 
understand from management, tried to run some of this down. Oh, no. And uh, this photography got a picture of it, of the man, and of his license plate. So the guy got out of the car, and he was trying to take away his camera. And, but the police were right there. It wasn't at the main place where people were. It was uh, one of the ones right next to it. This was just before dark? Uh, no, it wasn't that late. With some more marchers catching up to the march. How you doing? And, uh, and so the cops stopped him from taking the camera. And uh, the photographer is going to, uh, well, he's bringing the case against Yes, so. But I don't know the name of the photographer. <laughs> We're trying to find out who he was. Oh. Yeah, I remember when we bought the port of Pier 80, we actually had a tractor trailer driver try to drive over us. And it took about 25 of us, but we were able to push him backward. Wow. So that's people power. Yeah, people get so bent out of shape. Just take it easy. Your life's too short to get pissed off all. Yeah, yeah to run people down. Gee. Yeah, there's a lot of violence in Israel. Um, like if you're leftist and you're uh, you're demonstrating against the government in Israel, that's very hard nowadays. If uh, demonstrators are getting attacked at demonstrations by right-wing groups and it really seems like the right wing has taken over in Israel um, so that's why actions like yeah that's why actions like block the boat are even more important than ever well speaking of violence look at the school shootings in California all over the yeah, all over the country now country and it's one that they're being spotlighted by the press and used to sell airtime but also there's just so much gun craziness all over people yeah fight fight and i i blame the video games a lot because to call it a game where all you do is fire and fire and fire it's, it's yeah i'm not really big on this first person shooters okay folks we're running down on battery here so i am going to stop the stream for a minute and replace the battery and i will be right back <laughs> 